Hey folks, Sam here with Sam Wood Outdoors. Hey, uh, it's time for a trapping video. I know you all are thinking, Sam, it's middle of June. Uh, what are you doing trapping coons? There ain't no money in it. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there is. This is a, a nuisance job I'm doing, and I thought I'd take the opportunity because there is a lot of people that text me or I message me and say, hey, Sam, I got a coon I want to catch him alive and I want to kill him. What do I do? How do I go about it? So, you know what? Here it is. We're going to live trap these coons. Uh, a couple reasons. Um, this is a job. It's on a lake. $100,000, $200,000, $300,000 homes all over the place. I really don't need a raccoon hanging out of a hole in a 160. The other thing is, um, if I'm regular trapping, you know, I put two, three, four traps out. I, I don't want to take the chance of having that many traps out on a lake, uh, kids, whatever. It's just a liability issue. Um, I know I could use dog-proof traps, but that's another liability issue. Plus, when I got to get when I get there, I either got to whack the coon because he's in a dog-proof trap, or I got to try to wrestle him around, get him in a gunny sack, and all that shit. Best thing to do: live traps. It's the way to go. It's what we do, and uh, that's it. So. Most of you think catching a coon in a live trap is pretty simple. It is, but if you're doing this to try to make money, you want to do it efficiently, just like running your trap line. So I got a live trap here. Uh, this is basically just a cheap live trap. I don't go out and spend all the money on the, uh, the high dollar live traps. I don't really have a problem with them getting chewed up. They last me three, four, five, six years, whatever, and I make my money on them. Um, but basically the concept is you have a door, and you have a trigger just like this all kinds of different trigger systems um, but basically what happens is raccoon comes in here sees the bait whatever goes in here puts his foot on this uh, basically it's like a one-sided teeter-totter but he put his foot on there press that down door closes got the raccoon now in some states it's illegal to live trap a coon and transport it and let it go I know that a lot of people watch the Discovery Channel and there's trappers on there and they, oh, we got to find a pretty little spot to let them go. Here in Wisconsin, I believe the law says you cannot let them go on public property. I don't really know the whole legality of it. Um, tell you the truth, I just, I get them home and pop, done and life goes on, you know, I take care of it. Um, fur's not really worth nothing this time of the year. So, you, you know, that's not what I'm after. How I do these jobs, um, I, pay, I charge them a setup fee. And then uh, if it's close to home, I charge them by the animal. If it's not close to home, I charge them mileage and the animal. So there's money to be made. But, you know, you can't be out there screwing people. So you got to make it work. So here's what I do. No dog food, no cat food or anything else. I don't dick around. I go right to the dollar store. I get me sardines and oil. Done. Then, the secret to this is getting... If you just take and throw a piece of fish or something in there, the raccoon's going to come in here nine times, or, you know, not nine, but five out of five, ten times, he's going to reach over, he's going to get your bait, he's going to be gone. We just don't want that dicking around. We want him to spend as much time in the trap as we possibly can so he'll trip that trigger. So what I do, take a can of sardines. I just pop the top only about that far. And I do this right on the site. So all that shit that just spilled out is all around. It's kind of an attractant. My freaking dog loves it. She's down there. Then I take a screwdriver, a nail, or whatever, and I poke a hole in the can. This is easy here. It's just easier to do it on the ground. It's a done deal. So get all the way, Karma. Just like that, I poke a hole through the can. And I take a piece of trapping wire. I got it bent in a U. I stick that through the hole, just like that. I have this hook. Most traps have a hook that'll hold the door open for you while you're working inside so you don't slam it on your arm or anything like that but we reach back here and we put that right through the back just like that i give that wire a couple twists that's it done then i set my trigger 
just like that, take my hook off, and I'm done. So now, whatever animal comes in here is going to spend a lot of time in here because he's not going to be able to get that bait out of there in one big chunk. Spend a lot of time in there, he will hit that trap pan and we will have them. I have little ones like this that I use on squirrels. Um, and it's the same concept. I put this up and you can see there's still a uh, piece of corn in there, cob. But I use cob corn and I just wire it to the back. I want the squirrel to spend as much time in there as possible. So that's it, guys. I have three of these out already on that nuisance job. Um, kind of, I'll take this one out there because I'm sure going to have to reset it. It's my first, I set the traps yesterday. Um, so this will be my first check out there. Hopefully we got one, two, three, four coons, whatever it is. And uh, that's that. Let's go check some traps. All right, here we are. We're at the property that we're doing a nuisance trapping on. Like I said, it's out on a lake. There's very prestigious homes here. Um, so anyways, show you what got going on here. I got a trap down there. And then the, right next to it is a coon toilet. It's a nice flat spot. I know the coons are going there, so I set it there. Set one right here, same thing. Toilet right there. Sort of coming out, going to the bathroom. Good spot, they'll probably be eating. And in the third trap, there's Mr. Raccoon. So we got him! But anyways, um, man, I was hoping to get more than one, but it is what it is. So let me explain this whole thing that's going on here. They have a basement there. They have a crawl space under this spot. And that is where the coons are getting in. <clears throat> Part of the job of doing these nuisance jobs they call you because they don't know what else to do. They've tried everything. These people have put stuff around. They've gone. They, they looked at holes. When I got here, they said, listen, we don't know where these coons are getting in. We have no idea. We've, we're just at our wits ends. So they're looking at you to help them solve the problem. Not only catch the coons like that, but to help them solve their problem. So I got here. I walked around the whole house. They have a drain pipe down there that they thought the coons were getting in and that you know that's just not going to happen the drain pipe otherwise they'd be coming up in their sink drain so i walked this whole thing and this is what i found if you see right there that's lifted up there's a well-used trail there's hair on there that's where they're getting in so i followed that and i can see that trail goes over this way hits a beam and it goes right back in so we know they're getting in a hole up there um, and we know where the hole is but we don't want to plug that hole off when them coons are inside. Otherwise, the coons are going to die inside there and we're just going to have issues. But how do you know that you've got all the coons? Well, I don't know exactly where this guy come from. Oh, he's happy. He's the star of the movie. So I don't know where he come from. I'm assuming and hoping he's come out of the house. Um... But what I do, once I figure out where they're going in, um, I figure out a way that I'm gonna know. So I got these sticks here. And I have to put that there, and I'm gonna put that there. So now, if a coon comes out, he's gonna knock them sticks over. And I've told the homeowners that if they come out in the morning and them sticks are still standing, to get that hole covered that day. These coons are not gonna stay in here overnight. Um, this time of year, they're out every night. They're out every night. So, um, that's that. So we're gonna, we're, we got the sticks up there. I got my other trap already set, one I brought with me. And we're just gonna set that in here. Boy, he's not happy, is he? Um, and we're just gonna set that here. Make sure it's stable. Um, and then we'll be back tomorrow. And if we have a coon tomorrow and them are knocked over, we're going to reset this spot. If we don't have a coon and them are not knocked over, odds are it was this guy. Um, if we catch another one, it could be there's more than one in there. And that's, you know, probably the case. But that's, uh, that's it. That's part of a nuisance job. One, you got the, your, your job is to catch the animal. The other thing is to give the homeowner, um, 
a way to take care of things. I do believe he's got a lot of raccoons um, in the area that come here just because of that toilet there and that toilet down there. So um, that's one of the other reasons why I have them sticks there. I don't want to be out here trapping all summer and catching 400 coons um, and, and <laughs> it's not his problem. His problem are the ones that are going in there. Not any of them that live out there. So that's it. We're going to take and uh, go take care of this guy. And All right, there he is. Got him loaded up, taking him for a ride. Um, and I thought I'd take this time right here to answer some questions that you guys are probably going to have for me. Um, I'm sure the first one is going to be, do you need a license to trap out of season or nuisance trap? Here in Wisconsin, you do not require any sort of license. Um, you do have to have the landowner's permission. Um, and I get it in writing. I had it carried in my wallet all the time. Um, you know, I so-and-so give Sam Wood permission to trap my land, blah, blah, blah. And I keep that in my wallet the whole time that I'm doing that job. Um, but check your local laws. I would assume that pretty much anywhere you could, as a homeowner, buy a live trap and trap a nuisance coon or whatever you had to do on your property. Um, I know you can't trap uh, otter out of season. You can't trap uh, fisher, marten, stuff like that. Um, but coons, possums, beavers, in fact, beavers, you can shoot out of season. You can shoot them, or you can even shoot them during season if they are a nuisance and you're a landowner. I don't know if you can do it. I think you can do it as a landowner's representative. I'm not too sure on that, but I don't get many beaver calls. Um, I get a lot of muskrat calls, but I just whack them with 110s and done. Um, so yeah, that, that's how it is, you know, and uh, so check your local laws, see how that goes. Um, I would recommend if you do this and you're not you're gonna do it for a living even in Wisconsin you get some sort of insurance um, you don't need a kid sticking his finger in a live trapped coons cage um, and end up getting his finger bit and having to go through all the bullshit of whatever they're gonna put you through um, you know nine times out of ten a, a person has to accept responsibility but we do know that uh, kids are falling in gorilla cages nowadays and alligator ponds and shit like that so have insurance is what I recommend um, is there money to be made nuisance trapping yeah um, you know I know guys that make a lot more money at it than I do but I don't do it full-time um, I just kind of do it word of mouth and, and that's that um, what do I charge? Like I told you, I charge a setup fee and then I charge by the animal. And if it's a long drive, um, I charge them mileage. But I do have some farmers that I trap. Whoa. God dang it. Almost hit, almost hit a deer. I do have some farmers that I work for, that I do for, uh, that, that when the sweet corn gets up and, uh, I go out there, I usually give them a week, I trap really, really hard, and I trade off trapping privileges, hunting privileges, and stuff like that, so a lot of this is not just for money. Uh, well, it is for money, because I get more land to trap, and then I can make more money. <laughs> so that is that. As far as how much money I make, I'm not going to say. Uh, my competition will probably watch this video, or my future competition may watch this video, and they don't need to know my numbers. That's between me and the, the land, the homeowners. Um, so that's that. Um, what do uh, you do with the coon or whatever when you get them? Well, I think the law reads here in Wisconsin, you cannot let them go on public property. So I assume you could probably let them go on private property, but really you're just transferring the problem or you know you're transferring disease or whatever so I just done um, and this time of the year the meat is really 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 good it doesn't have all that fat and stuff like it does the fall of the year you know this guy's a young coon last year's little one he'll be some fine eating he won't be much but he'll be fine so you know that's it guys pretty much uh, how to take care of a uh, uh, you know a coon problem or whatever uh, 
Easy peasy, Japanesey. I gotta go. I got stuff to do. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, subscribe, share. Um, and if you have any questions, post them down there. I'll try to get to them. Um, but usually if my video is, is an older video, I don't get a notification that I have a question. So go to one of my newer videos, post your question there, and we'll get back to you. Thanks, guys.